Hi there, it's Peter Hipster King from the Hairy Game Lords, and this evening we have been playing this Cities of Venus from Tin Robot Games. What did we think? Stay tuned to find out. Cities of Venus is at its heart a really okay, kind of light, um, light medium Euro game where you're basically worker placement and resource managing. There are some really, really nice um, elements to the game. The key thing that I think sets this game apart, this is a prototype copy we've got um, and the component quality, even in the prototype, is absolutely <laughs> lovely. So you have not one, not two, but triple layered boards, um, which allows you to do this with your cards, which we really like. So the cards that you're going to be drafting, which are being dropped, you are basically setting up floating cities in Venus. You've all got a floating city. And then Earth are going to be supplying you with these canisters that have got various good bits in them that are going to either increase the number of pop your v population, which are like your spacemen, which are your workers that you're going to be moving around on one of the key resources, or they're going to be giving you bonuses to your city. So what you're going to do, this one is a mining card so it's going to go into your mining space on your board and you are going, you are able literally to slot the cards in like so and the bits that are important then appear replacing um those parts in the board so this this one is going to cost you you're going to basically not going to be able to have a population of six guys working in this you're only going to be able to have four now but you gain a victory point and you are able to add two to every mining dice roll that you do. So each time you're going to be getting two extra minerals, which you're going to be able to use to potentially buy more canisters. You're going to be able to buy a Venor um, if you want. And at the end of the game, every four of those minerals is worth one victory point. So there are, I like the element of the, the, the sort of, the speed that this game plays at because the first five of the element first five phases of play all happen simultaneously um which means that you know we took it in turns to start with as we were learning the game or we were careful that we were sort of taking it step by step um but very very quickly got our heads around what we were doing and you're going to be um adding workers to your board you are going to be taking a worker off from your shield because the acid rain is going to be damaging your city Acid. and so, so you're going to be losing shield workers you are going to be going off and doing some mining if you want you can um you're going to be using the smallest number of food or air and water workers to replenish your workers and then once you've done all the basic parts of the the turns you are then going to move on to the main board which is a really nice neoprene mat again the prototype quality of this is really really high and you're going to have a market of cards that you're going to be able to use v noughts from your various um, parts of your city and the crystal you've got to buy upgrades to your city or you can buy population boosters that are going to add population across your city or maybe into one specific um, region you're going to be playing and playing and playing working through three different phases in terms of the, the, the numbered decks of cards and somewhere in that third deck is going to be the picture of the earth that means it's the last turn and then it's going to be adding up victory points that you've got from the cards that you bought and the victory points based on the number of workers and minerals you've collected really really nice game it looks a lot more complex than it actually is so this is a really nice i'd say this is a family weight game but with um, high-end level components throughout the game and I say this is a prototype but if the prototype quality is this good have a look at the Kickstarter page and see what the quality looks like for you but I would say definitely family mid-weight game um, it was really nice and simple to play and I'll let the other guys tell you a bit more about it because they definitely played it better than I did because I came last and last by quite a while so um, I will <laughs> let them tell you how you should go play this game to win Hi! Dave the Victorious Grey. Um, so, firstly, possibly most importantly, fancy meeples. If you've uh, seen any of our other videos, you will know that I like a nice meeple, and these are exceptional. Little 
V naughts, little spaceship fellas. Excellent. So, how to win um, by Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so, very nice board, and you have a market. The thing with this game, and I'm not sure if it's a really good thing or a weakness, but you can see the market right at the start of the turn before you generate your population. So, smart man. goes, hmm, so I'm going to get a card, for instance, this one, that gets me extra people in my uh, engineering department. So I'm not going to put anybody in my engineering department this turn. I'm going to leave that pretty much empty because I'm going to fill it up with this. Um, I think I only had one card. I had tons of meeples by the end, absolutely thousands of them. About 40, maybe not a thousand. But... Pretty much every card that I got from the market gave me more people. And I maxed out my food and air populations, which generate you more meeples, as quickly as I could. So I was just swimming in people by the end of it. Nice. Um, nice image. Swimming in... Swimming. Swimming in people. Um, but yeah, I was like, hmm. Let me get that. Let me get more people. I think I only had one card where I got more people um, but I couldn't actually put them in the right place and that's to be honest because I hate drafted it because I didn't want Pete to have it. Um, <laughs> unlike you Dave. Which is really unlike me because I'm normally such a generous giving sort of person. Um, but yeah more people. Uh, that one and I had two or three of those let you put people anywhere you like. More people uh, and you get a victory point for every two people you've got as well. So that generated me probably half of the victory points that I got at the end. Um, how many victory points did you get for having people? Pete didn't have very many people. Um, I also I victory points on cards. I also that had a really cool uh, card that went in here that meant that I didn't have to spend a person every turn because of the shields. Um, and I think I finally, the only downside to having cards here is if you pick up another one, you get rid of the one that you had in there. And I had to give up my shield guy, but right at the end, so it didn't actually make a significant difference to uh, my population. Um, and uh, the other quite useful one is these ones, increase your maximum population. Um, very important. And I nearly ran out of room on my little spaceship um, because I had so many people. What more can you do? So, yeah, very, very straightforward uh, for some of us anyway. Um, I think the first sort of turn or two, we were getting used to it. But after that, it was really, really sort of family weight. And you could play this with pretty much anybody. And we played in probably our first game. It was probably pushing an hour. And I think the box says... 15 minutes per person, which is probably about right for once. Well done, guys. You got the right time on the box. So two thumbs up for that. Doesn't happen very often. But yeah, doesn't overstay its welcome. Nice and simple. Looks great. Go for really, really, really high populations is the way to win this. Trust me. Two thumbs up. Ah, greetings, world. It is I, the bearded lady. Uh, this evening, I came second. Good times. I also... Followed uh, Dave. Well, I didn't actually follow what he was doing. I just, we seem to be working in the same way of. Simpatico. Oh, good. I'll let you say that word again because I can't. Simpatico. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so both Dave and I were really focusing on these two areas here. The, depending on which one was the lowest amount, was how you would replenish. So I very quickly managed to upgrade this location so I had seven people in here and then six people in there and in the end and if i only got it, i got it in the last round and if there was more rounds available then i would have been able to get seven people rather than six because i managed to get an eight person ting going on in there nice uh and actually it was quite amusing to look over at pete who was like really struggling because <laughs> he had like two or three people on his board Whereas Dave and I were, were literally maxing out all of our locations. Dave, I was like lining them up as Pete would do, just in a nice order. Dave was just dumping them in. And uh, uh, 
And we were all like, we were like, have you got that one filled? Yeah. Have you got that one filled? Yeah. P. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. All right, P. Listen to those salty tears. This was really nice. This is a nice, this is the little kind of uh, space base fang that goes, that's hovering uh, above your locality. And when you fill up this card with eight people, then you it unlocks for you uh, some better cards, some special abilities that you can slide into the background of your base, which is really nice. Also on here is the kind of like, the, the cheat sheet, so tells you what you need to do each turn. Also has a reminder about end scoring, which is really helpful, that it was there present throughout the game. Um, so like Dave and I, you could be like, oh, cool. Um, you, there's bonuses available for the maximum. So if you have the most people, which Dave did, or if you have the most minerals, you get extra points. Um which would have which helped Dave in his win. The special cards that you get from, from this location, there are multiples of these special cards, and they are chosen at random. Also, there are only... Well, the game we were playing, there was only two of each card. Is this? Is it kind of like it's levels? One, it, yeah, so if, you, if you've got four players, you have three. Right. So it's one of those ones that can be a little bit annoying. If you're not quick off the mark you could miss out on a really good card that could slot into the background there and help you out i managed to get a card that allowed me to re re uh re-roll any dice that i had rolled for the mining which was really helpful dave got one where he got you could add two to the digits on the dice very cool so yeah there was there was those cards going on as well so really really nice the game was great it was a lot of fun it played well it didn't outstay its welcome but as a gamer i was i was i was wanting there to be more strategy more strategy in there maybe like uh, a really high a really high like victory points at the end maybe like 10 victory points but limiting a uh, population in that locality to maybe like one or two uh, so that actually there's that decision on whether to make that to go for the end scoring, which will really hamper what happens in in the in game. I was looking for more strategy, to be honest, in this game. And yes, because we only review after the first playthrough, there may be more in this. Um, and I would like to see uh, a possibility of there being more in this um, in in later plays that we play through. But as it is, a good game and one worth checking out on Kickstarter. Uh, have a look. Get involved.